So I'm going to review this PCB from PCB Go Go. Right, so these are some PCBs from PCB Go Go. I'm going to do a little review on these boards just to see how they came out. It's the first time I've used PCB Go Go, and um, so I'm going to evaluate the quality of the boards. They asked me to do a review, and I'm doing one. So these are the actual boards. I did all the 10, I've got 11. As often happens, you get an extra one or two or three or whatever. You know, obviously uh, they have extra ones they make when they produce them in case of any errors. Now these arrived actually very quickly indeed. So I approached them, I think it was on a Thursday, you know, do a promotion with them. Sent them the files, the PCBs were organized on Friday. These arrived on, I think it was a Wednesday. It was like four working days from the time I actually ordered them. So very fast, especially considering where I am, I'm in a rural area. And I'm in New Zealand, so a completely different country as well. So not only has it got to get into a rural area, it usually takes a day or so, sometimes two days extra. Also to get into the country as well as being made. So for them to be that quick, I was actually very impressed. That's the fastest yet. I've used um, PCB Go Go now. JLC PCB, PCB Way. Uh, I think I've used. Um, oh, there's, another, there's one more. I can't think of what the name is right now. Elicro. I've used Elicro as well. Um, so that's four PCB companies I've used, and I've been happy with all of them. But this one so far has been the fastest. Now, is that a normal service? Maybe. Maybe they gave it a high priority because it's for review, so they, you know, make sure I got them nice and quickly. Help me out. Who knows? But I haven't heard of PCB Go Go until it actually approached me um, late last year. And I didn't actually have anything to make until last week. I approached them again, I think it was about three months or so. And I said, hey, is your office still open? They said, yep. So here we go. So these are the boards themselves. So as you can see, I've got these in red. Red normally costs a little bit extra. Um, the standard colours, like green, for example, it's a standard silk screen colour. And those are cheaper. When you want different colours, often the price will increase. And that's the case with these as well. It was still reasonable. You know, it wasn't out of line to what anybody else would have wanted as well. It's actually very so I think it's actually exactly the same price as um PCBY. I think I could do comparison with PCBY and it's actually worth having is basically exactly the same price. Okay, so here's the PCB Go Go website. So you can do all the various things as you expect from most manufacturers, PCB assembly as well, S and D stencils, that sort of stuff. So PCB prototype, I mean if I put in size of um, my unit which I think was um, I think it was 80 by 100 if I remember rightly or well, thereabout two layer yep quantity say 10 thickness standard quite now let's just do that so it brings us to the order form and as you can see it's much like any other PCB manufacturers order forms they basically have all the same stuff on them and this particular quote is PCBs are five bucks and shipping's 21 um, in this case, so if I change to my country, which is down here somewhere, that that changes it by much. Nah, shipping is now 25, but that's a DHL. So if I did some other cheap thing on a China Post, that should be cheaper, shouldn't it? It's 11 dollars postage now. There you go. So it's getting more more reasonable. When I got these, I think they came by DHL, and that came within say four days, four working days. From the time I ordered them, they arrived to my house, so that is extremely good. So you've got the various options here, obviously, size numbers, number layers, colours. Now, I normally do a yellow PCB, and that's currently the same price. They haven't changed prices on that, it's true red. Red is still the same. So it looks like they've also done what some of the other manufacturers are doing, and that's allowing any colour, oh, apart from purple, that's interesting. Any more the more common colours for no extra charge, which is nice. Then you just go through the order process and you just chuck it all in there. What kind of vias you want, or all the standard options. SMD stencils if you want one of those. Um, you can add those in and it tells you the cost extra in here. Stencil cost fifteen bucks. Not too expensive. If you're doing a lot of these, you know, fifteen bucks is worth paying if you're gonna be doing a number of your items then. So I don't want to go through the whole process, that's why I just show the site and just um give an example of what it looks like and you know the typical features it has so yeah make sure you go and check them out as far as quality goes of the boards well any errors on this board could be my fault for my layout 
This is a revision of an earlier board. Yeah, let's check. Get the original board. This is the original board. This is my leakage tester. I did a project on this late last year. Probably link it down below, or maybe I'll stick a card up there or something like that. Basically, this thing can put out up to 500 volts DC in order to test capacitors or semiconductors for leakage. And I've featured that previously. I actually built that already. This is like the prototype board, the very first revision. And I discovered that I didn't actually need all this resistor ladder stuff here. I didn't use that divider network. Didn't use any of that. Didn't use the op amp and that sort of stuff. So I basically, I didn't need all these stages on here either for the multiplier, voltage multiplier. So I basically redesigned that part of the board. Although somehow it didn't actually end up with being much smaller as you can see here. I guess I didn't do a great job of that, but I could have maybe got a bit more compressed. But I did some other things like I put a big capacitor on here as well, add some extra smoothing and change some extra parts, add some extra protection circuitry and that sort of stuff. Yeah, so, you know, I've took some out and added some in, so I suppose, and changed the layouts and the layout, the layout of the capacitor is a bit less efficient. You know, I've got four there and here I've got six in almost the same space. Because I've got diode spacing, so anyway, waffling again. So the quality of the board actually looks good. I haven't looked at it under a microscope, but the alignment of everything looks absolutely fine. Silk screen quality looks good. If I do a comparison with this unit here, some parts of it should be identical pretty much. Like in this, this area here, they look the same. I can't really say that one's better than the other. So that's a good reference, I suppose. It means it's you know, no worse than this board. I think this one was, this might have been JLC PCB did this one, I can't remember. So, so silk screen lines, alignment and everything looks good. The wires look good. The solder mask, the alignment of that all looks good. I can't see any issues. It looks probably as I designed it really. I mean I've got a couple little bits on here where I've got some silk screen um, going over holes like here. You know it's just a thing on my part. And um, I think another one, where was the other one? Here? I think it was, yeah, I think it's supposed to be JP4. I think I made a mistake on that on, on my layout. HVAC line. That's purely me. Not allowing for the fact I've got a slot there, I think, and I've just not actually moved the text over enough. You know, it's a minor thing because I did change some values and things like that. Added some extra circuitry on there because that's right. I did some circuitry on here to allow for the switch, which is another thing that took up some more space. So this is the switch here. So obviously the white gets wired in. Previously I didn't have any kinds of connections on here for the switch wiring. It just went out of the board to the switch and did some wiring on the switch and it came back to the board. It was now actually integrated onto the board itself. So I've got a load on here, a 2 watt load resistor, so you can drain capacitors and stuff like that, it's all built onto the board. So it's got some extra parts on here, which is why it ended up being not much smaller than the original. They've actually put their part number in here, reference number for the order, I'm guessing, just in there. It's tucked out of the way, so that's fine, not worried by that. Sometimes I put them in stupid places, sometimes they're fine. Where is it on this one? It's up there, tucked out of the way as well, so again, that's fine. Board wise, they look good. So I'm going to actually, I'm going to start assembling these now. I've got two boards here. These are being sent to other YouTubers as a little project for them to work on. Little gift, I'm giving them a little gift. But it's, hopefully, I'll do some videos on these building these units. I don't know if they will or not. Hopefully, I do. If that's the intention at least. And it's just gives them little tools to use, I suppose. But I'm going to partially assemble these. I've already got some of the gear already ready to give to them. Like here's the Arduino controllers. I've already got two of those already done, already assembled, pre-programmed, ready to go. Um, as well as various parts like switches and, and front panel mounts, you know, for the banana plugs, high voltage power supplies, pots for the front, control the voltage, display modules. I've got all these bits here. I've got to do the individual components as well yet. But I was going to pre-assemble the surface mount parts to make it a bit easier for them. I know I've seen one of them soldering surface mount parts before and that's been fine. I haven't seen the other one soldering surface mount parts. So I don't know I don't know if they're okay with that or not. So I'm just gonna put those parts on. I've just got my flux pin here. So I've only got really a few parts. I haven't got much surface mount stuff here. I'm just gonna do a few bits. So there's actually not much. So we've got the voltage regulator and we've got uh, four capacitors and two resistors. And that is all the surface mount parts on that board. They'll just make it a little bit easier for them, and they can do the rest of the stuff, which is all through hole, which is definitely, you know, they're both definitely capable of doing that. Okay, I'll get the parts out. So I'll just use a couple of these parts books, just, you know, Ch Chinese sample books. 
you never quite know what parts are getting in these, but it's not overly critical, so it doesn't really matter in this case. You know, if you're really worried about the quality of the circuitry, then you may want to get, you know, parts from RS or M14 or something like that. But in this circumstance, it's absolutely fine. It doesn't need to be that that perfect. What I've got here, these are 47k resistors, which are going to those four bits there, those four markings there. And these are 10 NF capacitors, which go into those four there and those four there. So I need to get my tweezers. Okay, what I've decided to do is use 1206 parts. They do fit on these pads, this might be 1206 pads actually, I don't actually remember. So the capacitors can be 0603, that's fine, they're just um, bypass capacitors, that's all they're for, right? So the smoothing of these inputs and stuff like that, so they can be quite small, that's fine. But these resistors here, they are potentially current handling slightly. But they are part of a resistor divider. It shouldn't handle much current. But I think, well, if I go to a slightly larger size, I'm more, less likely to have a problem with them possibly potentially burning out. Like so I've already got one part out here. You can see it actually fits on those pads just fine. Hopefully you can see it. It's still a bit small. Okay, so you can see it fits on there just fine. So I'm going to actually just use these 1206 parts instead for the resistors. Capacitors are fine. Um, I just couldn't remember what I actually organised it with parts. So anyway, we'll just put those on there. I may use solder paste, but I'm not sure. I think about that. So I've got the air conditioning on. It's too hot. I was trying to do this without air conditioning on, but it's still too hot. Unfortunately. I'll use the iron. Wake it up. I'm happy using the iron method anyway, it doesn't bother me at all. Just a bit of salt on each pad. These tweezers here are pretty crap, the tips are all stuffed, so let's just get some better ones. Right. Come back. And if I use solder paste, this would be really easy to solder these on. But, um, you might actually have to think about that actually. Put over. Because right now I've got no solder on my bottom pad on either one of those. Justice is not quite the right place. Let's do that. Then I'll hold here and I'll get him getting back in place then. We'll do that way. Okay. Let's hot air those. I was hoping I could do without flux, but no, I'm gonna need flux. I hope I could use this uh, pin stuff, but no, it's just not doing it. That's better. Yeah, that's nicer. Cool. I must do the same the other ones as well then. Just stick some salt on first. Just to help these pads go. Solder. 
Right, you happy with that? Right, let's flush this up. Also, the pen flux is just a bit too thin for it. Alright, let's get these caps out. Number four on this ball. Number four on this ball. Okay. Let's do it again. We might have to drop this here there actually because it's a bit too much. I'm blow the parts away. Done. Should be fine. Not one hundred percent happy with, with, with these resistors, but uh, we know what they are. Just a bit bigger than I wanted. I thought it's my like five resistors, but not the right value. I do. I've got um, some 51k, but not 47k. So that's a bit annoying. Wrong values, but oh well. So I have to go to the larger size. I mean, I could have used those 603s probably. Those 603s probably would have been alright. But I just wanted to play it on the safe side. As soon as I've given these to somebody else and I want to make sure I don't have any problems with them. So that's those on there. I'm not going to do any more than that. Oh, yeah, that's right, regulator. I need to do regulator too. So I'll do the same thing that. Get some solder on there already. And melt it in. My iron's not turned all the way up, so it's going to have trouble melting this bit. It's a massive ground plane. I need to uh, increase the temperature when I do that. Oh, it's gone to sleep. No, it's gone to sleep. That's why. Let's wake it up again. I thought it was struggling a bit too much. There you go. That's fine. Right. So now in here, pretty sure these are the right ones. 
some more somewhere actually. I can't find the other ones, I've got somewhere already open. No, I can't find them. All right. That knife still works well. So there's one, two of these. So these are the seven out of five regulators. So they are. Nothing too exciting. It didn't really need them, but I wanted to allow for various power supply ranges and stuff like that, and I wanted it all to be within the board. So this power supply here can also run the, um, like the display board as well. So can, the display board can be fed from this regulator too, so they're running off the Arduino board, things like that. Anyway, um, yeah, see if I need flux or not. Let's see, here we go. A big ground plane, so we'll see if we go with this one. Well, I think I'm going to need flux. Let's do that. So those are ready to send off. So, you know, as far as these boards go, I mean, these have been absolutely fine. You know, they're working all right, no issue soldering. Thermal mass is kind of what I expect them to be because the massive ground planes have got stuff like that. So, yeah, I'm happy with those. The only issues I have is my own design issues. So, so yeah, I think that PCB Yogo, the PCBs look absolutely fine. I'll probably do like a thing on the computer to show the website and stuff like that too. And make sure you check out the links down below for PCB Yogo. Because um, say these were actually, I think I said that in the intro, did I? These were given to me at no charge, right? So these were um, free of charge by PCB Yogo in order for the purpose of review. I should have stated at the beginning. Anyway. Um, yeah, right. You know, what else can you say about them, the PCBs? They were fast, price was what you expect, reasonable pricing, quality is good, um, service was good. I should actually explain that too actually, when I did the original order for these, I did an order on the website, just like anybody else would, um, but didn't pay for it, and then the rep um, arranged to have them made. But because the order was sitting there, he basically just duplicated the order and made that order work. But the original order was still sitting there and actually followed up with me uh, um, a few days later saying, hey, this order's still sitting here, um, you know, do you require some assistance? And um, so I said, no, that's fine, it's all been sorted out with the rep. So um, they actually followed up as well, which is you know, quite nice, actually, what, you know, being helpful. So make sure you go and check them out, I mean, I'm happy with them. It was certainly very fast, and that's always a good thing. 
So watch out for these balls appearing on uh, videos from other YouTubers. I'm hoping they do actually appear in other videos from other YouTubers. But um, there's two of them. This gives you a clue. There's two people I'm seeing these two. Yeah, I just hope they build them. There's no promises there. So make sure you subscribe, click the bell icon, and uh, give us a thumbs up too if you, if you like the videos or any of my videos. Give me a thumbs up. Always give me a thumbs up. You know, if you're a subscriber, then give me a thumbs up. If you want to give me a thumbs down, that's fine. Give me a thumbs down, but make sure you give me a comment about why. I want to hear why you're not happy with the video. You know, I can't improve what I'm doing if, if I get feedback, both good and bad. Okay. Um, I'm currently having an issue where lots of thumbs down have been put on my videos, I think. Um, not legitimately either. I think they're from someone which is trying to hurt my channel. So uh, make sure you give me a thumbs up to help combat that. That'd be great. One of the YouTubers I know should be fine with them, but the other one I don't know. Probably can be, but I'm not too sure. That's probably a bit offensive, isn't it, really? Let's just stay. Cut that bit out. <laughs> They're probably both equally capable. Um, this can be 0603. Let's find it as... Um, um, capacitors to smooth out thing. Oh, I can't blame you what they call. Bypass capacitors. Just bypass capacitors. That's all they're for, right? 